Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to do a monochromatic study of a blue jay. Um, I did a monochromatic study before, but in this one I'm going to actually incorporate black. And uh, before I just used the color only. So for those who have always asked, this is how I sharpen my pencils. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the video that explains the hows and whys behind me doing it this way. So as I had mentioned in the um, seven L's of just a drawing video, I started the drawing very light, very loose, you know, with large, simple shapes. And then it gradually, you know, as I get more comfortable, I start carving out the details. So after a while, you're going to start seeing the, um, the feathers develop. But I developed the, the body of the bird before the feathers. I developed the shape of the tail before the, the tail feathers and so on. Then it's on to the inking. And, um, you know, since I know that I'll be using watercolor afterwards, I keep my inking really light and open. You know, I try to um, let the form be open in some areas. And um, I try not to render too much details. So there's not that much, you don't see that much hatching, much cross hatching. It's really more focusing on, um, on the contour and picking out particular details and the feathers and so on. But I, I really don't try to um, uh, pay too much attention to light and shade and so on. In some cases, I may make the uh, the contour a little bit more bold than others, but that's about it. No, you know, rendering, no shading, nothing like that. So in this example, I'm going to be using um, phthalo blue and uh, ivory black. Now. Um, real quickly, something about monochromatic color schemes. You can use, uh, a, in a monochromatic painting, right, you can use the color only and white. And in this case, of course, it's watercolor, so we're using the white of the paper. You can use the color only and white and black, all right? And uh, you can also use the color and a, uh, like a, a subdued version of that color. So, for example, if, if it's a blue or it's a green or whatever the color is, there may be another uh a, a, a hue, another color that falls within the family of that hue, but it's much more subdued. So the, the point here is just to show you that there are different ways of approaching um, monochromatic paintings. And in this case, I'm using black and I'm actually showing you that, you know, it's okay to incorporate black in a monochromatic painting. It's just how you do it. So what I decided to do here was to um, uh, create like a value scale, if you will. So with these little circles, basically I created around seven of them. Um, I create values from the deepest value I thought I could create um, using the phthalo blue. And I diluted it to white. And then on the other end, what I would do is I'd combine it with the, the phthalo blue and the uh, ivory black and then lighten that to white as well. Now in having the value scale nearby, you can use it as a reference. And um, it, with drawing or painting, it's always good to have a reference, whether uh, uh, visually, like literally right there, or it's in your mind, you know, but it's very important to have a reference because in this case, it helps me to remember, um, okay, you know, where my deepest values are, where my lightest values are. So if you're working in layers, like I normally do, it, it keeps you um, in, a, in, a, in a safe place. It kind of guides your work in a, in a sense because you can know, okay, I'm not laying down too deep of values too early and it you know it keeps you in check usually i wouldn't necessarily have a value scale nearby but i'd have one in mind that you know guides the way i lay my colors down now as as i you know i'm doing the feathers here um i'm reminded of um there's an idea of a video series I want to do where I discuss certain concepts in, in art. And one of them is I want to I uh, kind of like talk about uh, various contradictions in drawing. And uh, here reminds me of one where with watercolor, you have to, you, you have to, it's important to sort of plan your work, you know, like say for example, like with this case, I don't know where I'm going to put my deepest values, where I'm going to put my lighter values. Um, how am I going to work out the details of the feathers and so on? So there's not a mush 
you know, there's a lot of small shapes and so on. However, at the same time, you cannot plan everything. So you have to plan and also not plan at the same time. And you have to, you have to be able to strike that balance when it comes to watercolor because you have to let it do its thing, but you have to guide it in a sense, you know, and that guidance is the foundation of your drawing. So you can't be completely carefree. You know, I, I don't think so. You know, I, I feel it works best for the painting that you guide it a little bit, but you have to let it let it do its thing. So in a sense, it may not make sense to you right now, but the more you practice it, you'll get a feel for it. Like, okay, you know, give it a little room and then let it play. So here's a, another uh, important point of about um, striking the balance between ink and watercolor. See. Um, here, you know, I'm going in with the pen and um, I'm fine-tuning little details. You know, there's there, there's certain elements of um, uh, of this where the pen works best, and you have to make that decision. Um, I could have used a small brush to uh, get some of the details, but I felt like in this case, some of them are best um, created using the, the the pen, and then using the white gel pen and just touching up certain things. And you have to be able to decide on your part which you want to use and which you think works best. There's no right or wrong answer, it's just what you think works best for your work. And uh, that's pretty much it. So <laughs> thanks for watching the video everyone. Um, if you liked something or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do and I'll see you in the next video.